Hello and welcome back to Dukascopy TV. Super Easy Policy has helped the world recover from the Great Recession, but how are the currencies coping? With me in the studio is Peter Frank to discuss. Peter, welcome to the studio. How do you do? Nice to see you. Now, we're just after Yellen's testimony. It was kind of much expected, but how do you, what was your take on how the dollar performed as a result of her, sta her statement? I think the, the dollar reaction was, I would say, fairly predictable. Um, obviously, the Yellen um, event had two big positives for the dollar. Number one, the optimism of the Fed about the weather disruptions being only temporary and that was a key support for the dollar because obviously we've seen some fairly weak data on and off in the first two months of the year and that's helped to undermine the dollar. So with the Fed saying that this is only going to be temporary and the economy is recovering very nicely, um, that is definitely a big short-term positive. And the other factor, of course, I think further out is the fact that they added another rate hike to their two-year profile. So 1% instead of 0.7% rates by the end of next year. Uh, clearly a medium term positive for the dollar with a, with a slight short term flow impact due to higher bond yields. So the two factors together, um, they produced about a one, one and a bit point rally in, in, in the dollar against the euro and against cable as well. Uh, I think this is about what one would have expected. And they also kind of took some measures to de-link um, from the unemployment figure as well. Mm -hmm. But over in, in, in Europe, as you mentioned, um, there some of the, the ECB members have said that the interest rates will stay quite low for a period of time or even go lower. What are your thoughts about this and especially in considering the resilience that we have experienced with the Euro? Um, well, for the Euro, there's obviously danger from the ECB coming out with dovish remarks. Um, Obviously, if you juxtapose that against the slightly more hawkish bias coming out of the Fed, then you could see a further extended down move in, in euro dollar. Uh, our view as a bank, we discuss this a lot, obviously, as a European bank, and the, there is definitely a risk scenario that the ECB produces perhaps an extra policy ease somewhere. Um, they've talked about different measures that they could adopt. Obviously, the most uh, negative for the euro would be a cut either in the refi rate, a small cut, mm -hmm. um, or negative deep, depot rates. Um, but we don't, as a bank, think that they'll do either. The, the move, we think, in euro dollar will be downwards in the next few months, but it won't be driven so much by the ECB. More outperformance of the US growth um, as the economy recovers from, from the weather related weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So we think it will be more macro driven rather than policy driven for the next month or two. Okay. So it does seem to be the kind of the, the continuation of the dollar story, but yeah. we have targets. We have um, obviously the sentiments that are the statements that the policymakers can make, but we also have the geopolitical tensions which are continuing mm -hmm. to uh, affect the markets in some way. Now, We've seen the, the flight to quality over the last few weeks, but who do you think is most vulnerable in terms of currencies with the current situation? Um, it's, it's a tough call as far as the risk aversion because it, it's coming out a bit differently than previous episodes of risk aversion in recent years. Mm -hmm. if, you, if we look back to summer last year, the commodity block was hit immediately. So you had a big sell-off in Norwegian Krone, uh, Aussie dollar. Um, the commodity currencies were hit hardest in the G10 and that was because most of the weakness was supposed to be in the EM space and it was a, about lowering expectations of global growth. This time around the risk aversion seems tied not too much to China even though that is obviously a concern because of the whippy data in the new year period but more tied to Ukraine which is a very specific problem plus issues, political issues in Turkey, Thailand, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's not a global pattern where the market is fearful of a downturn in global growth. Now, as, as that seems to be the type of risk aversion we're getting, um, in our view we think there will be much more resilience this time around in the commodity block and there could even be significant outperformance, particularly of energy-based commodity currencies. Then in that environment you might be looking at going long Nokia and CAD and going short, um, perhaps a currency like the Aussie dollar that's not really that 
are energy linked. Okay. Um, now, something that I was going to ask was touching on China. Mm -hmm. And as we approach the end of the, the trading week, there might be a few jitters ahead of Monday's PMI data um, mm -hmm. from China. Yeah. Do you think that the one softness is a theme which is likely to continue? Well, it's it's been uh, a very important first couple of months of the year for China because they they have had data that's been all over the place. <laughs> uh, the People's Congress has, 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 however, said to the markets, look, we're going to have 7.5% growth. Mm -hmm. And they've hinted at doing whatever is necessary to achieve that goal this year. So it is important Monday, if we see weaker PMIs, big drops, um, then I think the CMI could weaken further. And that could definitely undermine some of the commodity currencies, particularly the Aussie would be, uh, the Australian do dollar would be at risk. Okay, well, it does seem as though we have a lot to look out for. Thank you so much today, um, Peter, for coming in and sharing your insights with us. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, well, that's all from Peter and myself. But make sure you keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV for many more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now.